All right, back to the markets. Nice pop for the Dow, small loss for the Nasdaq. David Barnson is with us right now. What do you think is going to be the impact? It, look, it looks to me like we are going to get a jump in the corporate tax rate, 21 to 28 percent. That looks like it's going to happen. What's the impact on the market if indeed that does happen, David? Stuart, I want to answer your question, but first, will you make me a promise? Can I come back on and take the other side of this work from home issue with with you sometime? I never, ever get to disagree with you, and I disagree so much on this one. I really want to talk about it with you next week, okay? Okay, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's suspend the discussion of the market. Why do you think I'm wrong about back to work? Go ahead. You, you, you got two minutes. You know, I do. I think that people operate as if somehow we just sort of accidentally fell into this idea of people going to an office, separating their work life and their home life, as if this wasn't something that came about over decades and decades of natural, organic human behavior. There is a reason that we come to an office to get certain work functions done. And I think you're right on a lot of what you were saying, that working from home proved in the pandemic to be functional. It, it proved to be possible. But that's very different from saying it is optimal. And there just simply isn't any question. Those of us in finance know you can't do deal making by Zoom the same way you can being together. It's a relationship business. It's a collaboration business. Traders talking to analysts. There ha the, the entire dynamic requires people being together. And I understand people like working in their pajamas and only having to work half day and their boss doesn't know what they're doing. Well, I'm sorry. The grown-ups have to go back to their office. Cities need it. Infrastructure needs it. It's an entire lifestyle that has worked very well for a booming American economy for decades. Okay. Uh, I hear you. Uh, I don't have time to respond fully, but I do have time for one more thing from you, David Barnson, and that is you always bring us big and growing dividend stocks. You, you bring us stocks where the dividend is growing consistently, and the one you brought us today is Walgreens. Make your case. You've got 30 seconds left, David Barnes, Walgreens. Well, basically, you have a dividend yield of over three and a half percent that they've been growing for 80 consecutive years. You have a brick and mortar model that also has an e-commerce development, but more and more utility joint ventures with DoorDash, uh, a way to people are getting the vaccine. It's a very diversified, versatile business. There was some tough M&A they had to absorb a couple years ago. They're on the other side of it, and it's at the lowest forward multiple it's ever been. We like Walgreens quite a bit here. Well, you're right on Walgreens, but wrong about back to work. But well, that's a, we'll save that for another day, David Barnson. We'll, we'll save it. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Mr. Barnson, thank you, sir. See you again soon.